instead of music, we'd like to shake his hand. Cause music casts a spell on us that we can't understand. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guests, the cast of the one and only Genuine Original Family Band, and I'll let them introduce themselves to you. Greetings, everybody. My name is Bob, Bob and Rhea, and I play Mayor Bauer in the movie. Hey, my name is Pamela Ferdin, and I played Laura Bauer, um, the person who wrote the book that the movie is based on. Hello, this is John Walmsley, and I played Quinn Bauer. I was, um, I guess, one of the middle children. Uh, hi, I'm, uh, I am Gretchen Swales, daughter of Heidi Rook, who, uh, who played Rose. Hi, I, uh, I'm trying to think of what my, I'm so old now that I can't think of the name that I played. I, it was my name Ben, I can't remember what name, <laughs> what's my name? I, I've got Joe. it, I've got it, John here. Uh, Joe Carter. Ding, 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 Joe ding. Carter. Oh, Joe Carter. What, what? Yeah, I played, I played Joe Carter. What do I win? Uh, <laughs> well, well, well John, your name, uh, your name was handsome because I had such a crush on you. I thought you were the most handsome thing I've ever seen. And well, I was I, little. I was. I was about six. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Bob, and I'd like to know if you still have your dimples. <laughs> right, right. Well, there there are creases now. Uh, anyway, yeah, I I look back on it and I boy, I was I was handsome. I I, I look back, I say, gee, that guy's handsome. I uh, yeah, that I, I played opposite Leslie and Warren, of course, and I got to look into those two beautiful eyes uh, every day for four months, and um, I it was it was an incredible experience. Yeah, Joe Joe Carter, that's right. Yep. How did you guys initially audition for the piece? Because from what I read, Gretchen supplied these wonderful behind the scenes photos, which I emailed out to our cast before we, you know, even got to chat, you know, and it looked like from the newspaper clippings um, that there were a, a lot of calls for children and especially like over 500 auditioned for the parts. So what, how did you guys, you know, hear about the, the initial audition? Well, um, I can go first. Uh, my agent uh, called, obviously called my mother, and um, she brought me to Disney Studios, and I met with the casting director, and they played a little tune and had me sing the little tune, had me um, basically memorize it. It was easy. And then um, they had me do a little soft shoe dance because I tap danced. And then um, I went home, and I went back again, and I saw somebody, I guess, higher on the totem pole, and um, they did basically the same thing. And the last audition, my final audition, was with Roy Disney, and he wow. asked me to sing a song, and I sang Over the Rainbow. And he listened to me singing over the rainbow. And by the time my mother drove me home, my agent called and said that I got the part. Wow. <laughs> that's wonderful. So that's me. How about everybody else? <laughs> well, this is Bobby. Uh, my story is actually pretty simple. I have no clue. I really, <laughs> I, I don't remember any, I mean, I, at the time uh, when we started filming, I was actually nine years old. And, and one of the really cool things that was shared recently is there's a, a photo on my 10th birthday, and Pammy was on one side of me, and Leslie Ann Warren was on the other, and I'm blowing out the candles. And I remember that was in the commissary at the studio. But for me, uh, I, I really don't know how it came to be. I had done previous work, and obviously I'm sure I went through the auditioning process. Um, and then just the experience of just like working for three or four months continuously, we literally became a family. And that was what was so unique about it. We were amongst friends and as a group, everyone made it happen. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead. If I'm next, this is John Davidson. Uh, I, for me, uh, I did the happiest millionaire uh, at Disney and it was a three, I had a three picture deal that uh, the, the Disney people saw me on the bell telephone hour uh, and and I signed a three-picture deal 
uh, for Happiest Millionaire and Family Band, and a third one, which was never made. Uh, both these these musicals were supposed to be were supposed to capture the wonder uh, of of Mary Poppins, of course, and uh, Happiest Millionaire didn't, and and Family Bear did. I mean, I mean, as far as making money, you know, uh, the the th- the thing that happened in between Happiest Millionaire and Family Band was that Walt Disney passed away, of course. And so during Family Band, the interesting thing was that everybody was walking around saying, what would Walt have done? You know, mm. uh, he, of course, knew about he knew about Family Band, but wasn't there, of course, for the shooting. And uh, so every, all these little decisions about should it be red or yellow or big or pear shaped or they always said, what would Walt do? And, and so it right. was kind of a weird time. Um, and so I, I had the feeling that we were. Uh, that, that we all in the film and, and the director, Michael O'Herlihy. Yep. Yeah. Michael, yeah. That we uh, had kind of a free reign. I'm sure we didn't, but I, I, I felt that we were all making the picture ourselves and, and that, we, that we really made it happen. It was a tremendous camaraderie. Very, very, every, everybody seemed so supportive of everybody. And Buddy Epson and Walter Brennan were, were uh, very supportive of all the kids and, it, of course, when you work at Disney, it's always sunshiny and nice, and everybody's so sweet and so nice, and you know all that. <laughs> uh, apple pie, and, uh, yeah, apple pie, yeah. And and uh, th- there were no uh, harangues on the set or arguments or anything. It was just a, it was a great family band. Yes, I'll second that, um, John here. Um, my audition process was very similar to Pamela's. I, I do remember getting a, a call from the agent. Um, I started as a guitar player. Um, and music has always been my first love. And I had been uh, performing for a while. I'd done one, one professional acting job before this, but lots of shows uh, playing guitar and singing. So I brought my guitar on the audition and played, and I know I, I had to go back, you know, two or three times, um, and it seemed like the numbers of the kids auditioning were kind of dwindling each time. So obviously there was a, a paring down happening. Um, I remember there was, there was the casting director was a woman named Phyllis Bounds. That sticks in my head. And um, anyway, I, I don't remember actually. I think at one point I was asked to dance too, and I'm not, I'm still not a dancer. And that was a very challenging thing for me um, to be around all these people who really could dance. Kurt Russell could dance. Leslie Ann Warren is a fantastic dancer. Goldie Hawn is a fantastic dancer. These, and, and the kids, the other kids all had dancing experience. Bobby had just done a show, um, a TV show with Gene Kelly of all things. I mean, he could really dance. So um, I, I was a little bit out of my league with the dancing part of it. And like John said, everybody was just so terrific. And I actually have a story about you, John, because as I said, I was a kid playing guitar and singing, and I even started writing songs. I was 11 at the time. And I gave, I had the audacity to give John Davidson a little reel to reel tape a demo tape of some of my songs because, you know, he was making albums and you were so sweet. You listened to the tape and you said, well, you know, they're really good. There's, there's nothing I can use, but, but, you know, just keep at it. I thought that was very sweet. Oh, that's a great story. I, I don't remember that, but, I, but thank you for thinking enough of me to give me a tape. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Yes. By, by the way, those songs are still, the songs are still available. <laughs> you know, you know it's 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 interest it's interesting because I think the only reason that I remember it so well is I'm um I'm writing my memoir and so I have gone over all these things that I've done and um and the original family band was based on a true story where the Bauer family was a band, and they would go out and they would play fairs, and um, everybody played a different instrument. And then John Davidson, who played a journalist um, or a newspaper journalist, he got involved with Leslie Ann Warren. 
And we were living in Nebraska at the time. And John Davidson, her beau, was living in Dakota. So we all decided to move to Dakota because it was supposed to be so beautiful. <laughs> Remember, John? You said, yeah, oh, Dakota's sure. so beautiful. So the whole family moved out there, and then we got very involved in the 1888 elections. And Walter Brennan, the grandfather um, in the movie, he was, uh, he was a dedicated Democrat, so he wanted Cleveland. And so the... Um, the finale of the movie was the Republicans and the Democrats having this face-off, this standoff, and dancing and going crazy, and pies were being thrown, and, and it, was just, it was just enormous. And I found out, what was interesting is that, that scene was shot on the largest sound stage in, at Disney Studios. And uh, mm -hmm. because they needed a soundstage that big for this huge finale. So, um, so yeah, that's what was, the movie was about. And, in fact, it's Laura Bauer, the real Laura Bauer, came to visit us on the set. And she was in her 80s at the time. And... Um, she told everybody that we were doing a great job and that we were basically um, rekindling memories of her childhood and adulthood. And that was, you know, it was great hearing that from the real Laura Bauer. Isn't it interesting how, like, this is probably the most political Disney film? Because re-watching it, see, when I watched it as a kid, I didn't understand it at all. It was either you're on the green team or the red team <laughs> or the purple team and the green team. So it didn't make any sense to me. So that political drive, was was that even discussed on the set? Like, why everybody would believe the way they did? Because I remember reading that Richard Sherman said even Walter Brennan playing a Democrat was actually a, a, a Republican. So I just wonder, like, right. what discussion was, like, on the set. Uh, we were, uh, I remember thinking, oh, my goodness, this is how our government is run? Really? Is this a, but, yeah, the Electoral College is this thing that was set up in the beginning, which, which recognizes states that have smaller populations and all that. So, I mean, it, 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 there is a purpose for it. I see that. But we were all discussing what a crazy thing it is, the whole Electoral College thing, yeah. Yeah, and it and it is really timely. Also, I know that this is Bob, Bob Ria. Um, there was a line in in the movie, and I believe it was Janet Blair was talking to both uh, Walter Brennan and Betty Epson, and and the family. And there was a, a, a line that says, you know, we 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 will not you know speak politics in the house anymore. This is like the family rule. And I've got a good friend that lives out in the desert right now. And that's the rule that we have. Um, we don't talk politics, you know, when I'm visiting and, you know, he doesn't watch certain say, TV and cable stations that I like and vice versa. But the message, literally what this movie has, and it is timeless, is what you just said about with the electoral college. It, uh, yeah, they handle things differently then. They basically got their, you know, got their fists out. Yeah, right. My, of course, my right. uh, for me, my my favorite song was singing Dakota to to the group of weather. Run, run, street, da 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 da. Dakota, Dakota, <laughs> where the man stands tall. You know, That's some of those it. really uh, <laughs> yeah. one of a, a ballsy male number. I I, I felt like uh, the music man, only I I sang better than Robert Preston, but I, 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 <laughs> yeah, but I, I love singing that number. And se several times I've played Dakota and I've tried to say, say now, do you want me to do Dakota in, in my show? And uh, nobody did. Well, in the shower oh, this it morning, was, I said, well, bow time, bow time. That was the closing thing oh. that you did with bow time, bow time. Oh, I, I right. love about it. right. Yeah. Now, now I was. I know the good song. Out at, the, at the Disney yeah. Ranch. Oh, I I love that tune. Yeah. I actually but that was my song this done. morning in the shower. Thank you, John. <laughs> okay. You know. You yeah. know. Th this is this is Pam, and um, I'll tell you the the Sherman Brothers wrote beautiful a beautiful score for this movie, and unfortunately, because the movie didn't do well at the box office. 
um, a lot of these songs never got sung by people, but the Sherman Brothers, oh my gosh, these were some of their better best, I shouldn't say. I mean, all of their songs were great, and these were some of their greatest songs. And, you know, later on, um, I did... Um, I, I did Charlotte's Web, um, the animated version about Charlotte's Web, and and um, and they wrote that score too, and so um, it, it was just amazing. Their their music was was just amazing. But you know, I want to say well, one thing about the um, the Golden Oak Ranch in Newhall. It's not there anymore, but uh, we used to we used to go by bus from the uh, studio all the way out to this Golden Oak Ranch in Newhall. It was the Disney Ranch. And we filmed a lot of the exteriors on that ranch. And I remember it was so funny because they had a flock of peacocks. And I love peacocks. But sometimes yep. the peacocks would be would be making their beautiful song and they'd have to either wait to start the scene or cut the scene and do it again. <laughs> because <laughs> these peacocks were so loud and it was so funny. And I was so happy that they just let them be who they were and, and they were free and, and they were beautiful. And we would see them walking around all the time. And that, uh, that was the highlight of my, uh, my experience at the ranch. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a great memory. I remember the peacocks as well, and they are incredibly loud. Um, the other thing that, that comes to mind for me about the ranch, I, I remember taking the bus out there every day. And uh, I actually remember one day on location, I had a, a horrible headache. Um, it never happened before or since. And I, I remember throwing up on the bus on the way back to the studio in my cowboy hat. <laughs> so I guess, I, guess, I, guess, I guess it was a migraine. You know, people have those headaches where they... They, they get, uh, you know, they see colors and they have this horrible headache and they throw up and then it's over. And I had one and it was on the bus coming back from <laughs> Golden Oak Ranch. Yeah, yeah. I, it, yeah. Was a, it was a beautiful ranch. They had all the exterior um, sets and uh, it, it, was, it was really beautiful. Um, but yes, and, and I met the Sherman Brothers then. Do you remember them coming to the set, the Sherman Brothers? Because um, the next time I met them, like I said, um, I was doing, I was playing Fern, the little girl who saves Wilbur from being killed on Charlotte on, on the animated version of Charlotte's Web, and they came there too. And actually, we talked about doing the original Family Band, and they they said how much they enjoyed making that score and um they you know what can you say they were their icons I, I was just so honored to have been in their presence because they're just incredible they, yeah, were, they, they were wonderful they certainly, they certainly were and they were able to write melodies that are just so singable they you know what it, it, it reminds me and, and and i think the Sherman brothers have been criticized Sometimes uh, some people have have called them corny, and and I think it reminds me of how Jerry Herman uh, writes for Broadway. There's a writer named Jerry Herman who wrote Hello Dolly yes. and Mame, and and he was criticized because his his melodies were too singable because they were because, because they were too easy to sing, and but. Uh, because they weren't Sondheim, you know. Some people write like Sondheim, and there and there's right. there's no there's no chorus, and they're they're hard to sing and hard to learn, and and the melody goes all over the place. The Sherman Brothers write a melody that seems to go where you want it to go. As a singer and as a listener, it just they just feel good like an old pair of jeans the minute you put them on. Right. Right, and their and their lyrics true. were their lyrics were uplifting, and they were yeah. simple. They were simple, but yet they had a lot of meaning behind the simplicity. So, adults loved their music, but also children, young people, could understand and love their music. And that's a uh, that's a, a real challenge. Uh, part of the uh, part of the tension for me, or, or the background, uh, while we were filming, is that. 
uh, for both Happiest Millionaire and Family Band. I, I just had such a crush on Leslie Ann Warren. I just, <laughs> I, uh, she, uh, I just thought, oh my goodness, uh, I, I, uh, I that comes across. On her. <laughs> and, and I didn't. I, I thought I could never handle, though. I, I could never manage a relationship with with a woman. Uh, that talented and that um, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, that uh, perfect uh, emotional. And <laughs> that's well, perfect, but but I mean also emotional, which is what an actress has to have. Right. You know that sort of mercurial, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, and I just thought I would be overwhelmed by her, but I just uh, had such a such a question. At the time, I think she was dating John Peters, could she, the um, that's right. Yes, yep, yep. yes, she was, and I you know think... she was she was a driven actress too. So maybe that's why John, you um, you didn't know if yep. you could handle her because she was very driven. And I remember she had beautiful long hair. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one day she came to work and she had this short, short pixie cut right in the middle of the shoot. And so they had to fit her with a wig, but her boyfriend, John Peters, who would become a big producer, he was a hairstylist to the stars at the time. I remember him bringing her, he he brought her a little rescued uh, uh, doggy from the shelter, and they were they were really in love. But I, when she came on the set, without her long, beautiful hair, with this short, short hair, I nearly, I nearly fainted. I couldn't believe it. So she was pretty, like you said. I mean, that might might have been her emotional whim at the time. You know that photo, I, uh, that, well, the, the photo that was sent out earlier of, of uh, myself on my birthday with Pammy and um, and Leslie Ann. During that time period, yes, she was you know with, was dating John Peters. He gave me, they gave me a slot car, and you know a slot car and a controller and all that. Well, it's oh, literally wow. fifty years later, and I actually have that in my garage in the same pristine condition. Um, yeah, because growing up, again, I was 10 years old, but then growing up, it's like, oh, this is from John Peters, you know, that, that famous producer guy, you know, J-O-N, Peters, yeah. and the rest right. of history. I think also, we, you know, we got to work with a, a Kurt Russell at age, what, 13 or 14, I think Kurt was. 16, and, 16. And, oh, he was yeah. 16, but you would never have known in family band that Kurt Russell was going to become the macho leading man, the, you know, the uh, action adventure guy that he became. Oh my goodness. And he even played Elvis in a, in a film. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, what what a that, career he's had. Or that he'd be married or, or boyfriend of, I don't even know if they're married to Goldie Hawn, who was in right. the same yeah. shot with him, the same finale. I think that is yeah. probably where they first met. I bet you that I, that's where they very it was. first met. It, it was because I also yeah. remember, uh, you know, Leslie Ann was fantastic in many ways, including a dancer, as Goldie was a dancer. And I remember just watching them when they're dancing, and it's almost like a competition to see whose leg could be straighter yeah. and how high they could get it over their head. And you know what? Both of them, their legs were going like behind their head. It was like incredible. That's right. And that's where Goldie, yeah. she was in like a couple dancing scenes, and that's where they first met. And yeah, for Kurt, I, I remember on some weekends I got to go home with Kurt. He lived in Thousand Oaks and, uh, and spend the weekend during filming. And Kurt's father, Bing Russell, was the sheriff on Bonanza. Well, one morning, early morning, and I don't know how it came to play, but Kurt and I got into a shaving cream fight, and there was shaving cream all over us, all over the hallway, and Bing gets woken up like 8 in the morning, and he goes, what the heck's going on here? And he basically gave me a whack on my butt and grabbed Kurt and gave us the riot act, and again, this is the sheriff of Bonanza. Um, I remember that. Kurt was so, his whole family, they were so down to earth, his sister used to, you know, race these quarter midget race cars, and we'd go out to the track. Um, yeah, 
Buddy Epson, Walter Brennan, all you guys. I mean, you know, uh, John. John goes on to uh, Little House. I mean, it was just you guys. Everybody had went their own way, but I think the family yeah. did good as a group. We did. I think we all did all right. Yes, I think so well, too. And and do you remember how um, our stand-ins, uh, you know, um, well, your audience. I don't know if they know, but stand-ins basically stand in for the for the actor, and they um, stand there while the um, scene is being lit and blocked and everything like that. And that it's hard work to be under those lights for a long time. But the stand-ins for us, for the little kids, were um, from the Wizard of Oz. They were yeah, they right. were little people, yeah. and they they were in the movie The Wizard of Oz in 1939, and they would uh, some of them would entertain me with the songs from the movie, and it was just, uh, it was just, I, I was I was I couldn't believe it. Here here they were, and I had seen that movie so many times, and they were gracious and they were wonderful, but um, but yeah, they they did use the little people for stand-ins for us kids. That's right. I remember. I just flashed on. I just flashed on a memory in in that last dance scene when I danced with Goldie Hawn. She told me during a break. I said, "Well, what are you up to?" Because she was obviously exceptional and she was going to have a great career. Everybody saw her as somebody who was going to be something much more than just a dancer. And she said, "Well, I just did a pilot for George Schaefer called Laugh In. It, it's a crazy idea. I don't know whether it's going to make it or not. But but she at that point she didn't." I think it had been picked up, but they didn't know whether it would ever stay on the air. But uh, another subject, I, I need to go back and see the film again, because there's some, do you remember the scene where we're going down the street of the town? It's a celebration for something. And uh, Leslie Ann was in a wheelbarrow and I was uh, right. pushing. Yep. What, what was that scene? That, that was, was the, like that the, was the close, close of the film. Yeah, that was the closing. And I remember that wheelbarrow because John, you were sitting in it. And then they had to put, like, it wasn't a typical wheelbarrow with one wheel at the front, but they actually had, like, a rolling dolly. So that way you're not literally holding her up. But, yeah, you know, that was, that was like, one of the closing scenes down the main street. And uh, you're in the wheelbarrow, and then Leslie Ann cops on your lap, and the next thing it's, like, a 20-second lip lock. And I don't think you were complaining about that scene at all. <laughs> well, you mean, oh wait, I, I think I'm remembering it wrong. You mean I wasn't pushing? I was in the wheelbarrow with Leslie? I think you were. were did, uh, Tammy, didn't you have one of those pictures like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Originally, like it was supposed to be Walter Brennan in the seat, but then the seat, uh, the scene switched because the winning party was the Republican Party. So, John, you got to be in the wheelbarrow. That was the that was the oh, deal. That's right. That was the bet. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah, that was the best. Mm -hmm. Of course it was, yeah. By the way, you mentioned Walter Brennan. Do you guys remember that Walter Brennan, uh, bless his heart, uh, when you did a scene with him, he never looked at you because he was That's looking right. at, at cue cards just over your shoulder. Everything was written out uh, like, like a Johnny Carson monologue on cue cards right behind your head right. if you were doing a scene with him. I'd forgotten about that. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yes, I wow, remember I that. Remember I remember that, that very well. well. He was Well, he he was I have to say, he was I would say lovably cantankerous. He was. Yes, he was getting yes, older. Yes. He was getting older and it's not as if um uh, I or, or another kid, I don't know, but, but I certainly couldn't really sit down and have a conversation with him. He just wanted to do his thing and do it well, but he wasn't one to chit-chat. He, he was cantankerous. <laughs> yeah, he, he I, struck I, me as... I try to not bother him. I, I just, I just, anyway, <laughs> as, as opposed, I mean, Buddy Epson, Buddy Epson was so cute and, and wanted to show you his little dance and his stuff. And, uh, yeah, but Buddy Epson, of course, was much younger, wasn't he? He went on to do a series after that. Yeah. Well, he was in the, in the Beverly Hillbillies at the time. Oh, he that was. was the family band was, was made during the run of the Beverly Hillbillies, which lasted for years. And and oh, Buddy had was Buddy was already a Disney alumni because he played Fess Parker's sidekick in yep. Davy Crockett yeah. yep. in the fifties. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, yes, yes. So, um, get, but getting back to Walter, he was he was very serious, uh, and he w- he was a very conservative man. I remember that he gave us a gift at the end of the filming. Uh, at least I, I think I think we all got this. The kids. Um, it was a kind of a booklet, a set of American um, kind of the government documents, like the right, the Constitution, the yeah. Bill of Rights. And, and all that kind of, and he signed it. And I remember it said, it said to John, um, be proud you are an American, which is very sweet. Although I, I wasn't because my family, my family were from England and I was a, I was a British citizen at the time. So, um, so that was a little bit funny, but, uh, years yeah. later, um, I had a friend, um, Kathleen Nolan. I don't know if you remember, she played the wife on the real McCoy's. Years yeah. later, I got to know her at the time. She was the president of the Screen Actors Guild. So she had done this series, The Real McCoys with Walter Brandon. And she had a lot of stories because Kathleen is very, a very liberal woman. And she and Walter apparently used to butt heads all the time on the set yeah. over politics. Yeah. So and, and, and as someone mentioned earlier, it's funny that, that Walter in, in, the sh- in the show in family band was the, was the Democrat because he was a very, very staunch Republican. And, uh, and he, and he was kind of a serious guy, um, incredibly professional. And I, and I guess he just had the cue cards because, you know, he was getting up there and maybe his memory wasn't so great, but I was, I was so impressed at how well he could use them. And, it would be such for me. It would be such a distraction to have something there to read. I, 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 I don't know if I could act having to read cue cards at the same time. So I, I think I think basically it was you know he had he had it memorized, but I think it was just kind of there that he could he could give it a quick glance to to refresh his memory a bit. Um, he struck me as a very this hard this worker. This is Pam again. Um, uh, you know, it's interesting for people that don't understand um, acting and, and, and uh, performing on a sound stage. But right outside the sound stage at Disney Studios was the Little Red Schoolhouse. And it really was a Little Red Schoolhouse. It was painted red, and it had actually been there for years. And it had uh, schooled a lot of actors and actresses when they were young. But um, I don't think people realize that what happens is you're pulled out by the welfare worker who's a school teacher, and you're pulled out and put in the Little Red Schoolhouse for as long as you can be in there, up to three hours, because there was a three-hour limit. But the interesting thing is is that it could be in 20-minute increments. So I remember being pulled out of the sound, well, being taken out of the sound stage, put in the Little Red Schoolhouse, and literally a assistant director was outside the door timing when 20 minutes would be. And at 20 minutes, he would rap on the door and say, okay, we need you kids. And so we would all pile out and go back onto the set. And it was very difficult. I, I write about that um, in my book because that's very difficult. You're, you're in there for 20 minutes. You can't, get, you can't get back involved in what you're learning. You're thinking about the next scene, and they pull you out. And I just think that's a, 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 it's just not conducive to learning at all. So, right, um, right. yeah, so I remember I- that. I remember, this is Gretchen, my mom was talking about that too, about how difficult it was trying to learn on set and then going back and being part of a, you know, a public school again, uh, that being difficult. And I also wanted to touch too, Pamela, you mentioned uh, Leslie Ann Warren cutting her hair. My mom had told us about that growing up as well. She had um, seen Leslie Ann Warren in Cinderella just a couple of years prior and then absolutely loved it. And when she saw Leslie come in with her hair short, she burst into tears because she couldn't, <laughs> because it was so hard for her to handle. Because my mom, she did acting, but not, this was her only movie. She mostly did commercial stuff. Um, she got her audition because she was a, co- a competitive dancer. So they did competition ballroom dances. And uh, I think there was a commercial with some of the family in it because my 
my family, my mom was one of eight, so they kind of were also a sort of family band in and of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That was really hard, too, to go to go back to a public school. I mean, I always begged my parents to be allowed to go to Hollywood Professional School, which was a school that had um, actors in it. The kids were all actors, and so they at least could appreciate or or they could um, understand why you were pulled in and out of school because they were too. But unfortunately, my parents... Um, made me go to a regular public school, and it was very difficult because when I would go back, they they were so confused. I mean, they didn't like me. They didn't treat me well. I had no friends. They just couldn't understand why I might be in, in public school for a month and then be pulled out for three weeks and then go back for a week and then go back, uh, you know, be out for another three weeks. And so it was very, very difficult. Listen, it is, it is I, I think, this is this is John, the other John, John Davidson. Uh, I've got a twelve a twelve o'clock thing. I've got to go to here. I'm again. I'm on uh, I'm on um, East Coast Mexico time. Uh, I've loved this so much. It's so great to hear from you all, and I'll just bow out, and you all can keep going. But thank you so much for the experience. Thank you so much for oh, coming, thank John. You. Thank you, great. John. <laughs> thank, thank you, John. Great, great well, hearing well, from you. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to jump in really quickly is um, deleted scenes in songs because apparently Buddy Epson and also um, Janet Blair also had their own songs and the film was cut down by 35 minutes and the Sherman brothers were not very happy with this cut because it was such a long film but it was originally you know changed to cut it down to a specific point in time, which was strange. So do you guys remember those songs and those being filmed and other additional scenes of you guys being on the horses and other things that were filmed? I I don't. This is uh, John Walmsley. I don't remember those scenes, but I do remember um, the idea that the film was cut down a lot. I remember when we got that script initially, I think it might have been about a three-hour film it was a huge, thick, heavy script, the, the size of a coffee table book. <laughs> so I, I know they, they, I know they cut a lot out of it. Where didn't it debut though, John and Bob? Didn't it debut in New York? I have no the, idea. The, um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, and because I wanted to, I wanted to um, talk to Gretchen about this because. Um, a great memory that I have of your mother is that, uh, that, that we, we both were at the premiere of the film in Rapid City, South Dakota. They, they premiered Family Band in Rapid City, where this story takes place. Oh, wow. And, uh, not me. And, not me, Pam, right? No, no, Heidi. me, Gretchen. Okay, okay. <laughs> And we have those right, photos. Right. I think you, uh, your mother saved them, and we have some of those photos that she had sent me, and I emailed out too. So I didn't realize they did that. That that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've got to, I've got to take a look at those photos. But but what I wanted to say was, um, you know, when we when we made the film, it's interesting to to look back now because it's over fifty years. Um, you know what was going on at the time. We 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 worked from about um, February. 67 to I think we wrapped in June 67. That was the beginning of the summer of love. You know, it was the, the, the hippie summer. And that's, that's when all that started. Um, the following summer is when the film premiered summer of 68. And, and you can see, cause you mentioned the, um, the political aspect, the election aspect 68 was an election year. When we, when we made the film, LBJ was president and he decided not to run again, but 68 summer of 68 is, is, was the, you know, camp campaign period. And, um, and Richard Nixon ended up being elected, but when they had, um, when they planned the, the premiere in rapid city, I think somehow, um, I guess my, my mother found out about this and I think she must've contacted the studio and said, Hey, you know, can, can we be there? And 
<laughs> and it, it kind of, I have to say, in typical Disney fashion, they said, well, we won't pay for you to go, but if you <laughs> want to come, you'll be welcome. So, so my dad decided, hey, why don't we do that? You know, I'll see if I can get a couple of weeks off, and why don't we just drive to South Dakota? This is from, you know, from L.A., so this was one of the best vacations of my lifetime because I drove with my mother and father across, you know, Nevada, Arizona, Wyoming to, to South Dakota. And it was, you know, my first like big road trip as a kid. The other thing that sticks in my mind, and again, remembering that this is now 68, Martin Luther King had just been assassinated. Uh, this was June 68. And on the way to Rapid City, we heard the news on the radio that Robert Kennedy had been shot. And we had just left Los Angeles to drive to the premiere. But that aside, we got to Rapid City and, uh, and you know, we were kind of, well, we were celebrities. They, they had flown, Disney had flown a few people out from L.A. Uh, Janet Blair was there. Uh, Richard Deacon, who was in the film, was there. Anyway, uh, so we're there in Rapid City, and, and, and Heidi was there with, uh, with her mom and dad. And uh, so we were part of the premiere, and we, they had a big parade in honor of the film. They had a band playing, and I got up and sat in with the band, played guitar, and Heidi danced. And my mother, my mother has photos. I still have the pictures of me playing, sitting in with the band, and Heidi is just dancing up a storm, just ad-libbing a dance to the, the whatever tune we were playing. Oh, I love that. So great. I would love oh. to see those pictures. Yeah. You know, though, I really think that it did premiere. If I'm not... I really think it premiered at Radio City Music Hall in New York. March yeah, 21st. so yeah, I, so it was... And it's funny because... It, I mean, that was a huge send-off, and, um, you know, being at Radio City Music Hall for the premiere, and then, unfortunately, it just, it just didn't catch on, and it's just, um, yeah. it's, it's really sad, because the movie, I think, is really good, very entertaining, a lot of fun, but for whatever the reason, maybe it wasn't the right time. Like John said, things were getting, you know, liberal, and and I don't know if people still liked those type of movies anymore or, or whatever. But um, but I thought it was really neat. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to the opening. I would have loved to have gone to Radio City Music Hall for the opening of the original Family Band, but unfortunately, I, I didn't get to go. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I know, I, I'm absolutely sure that, um, you know, based on what I've learned since, that Walt's death just cast a shadow over the whole thing. I'm, I'm sure everyone was, was walking around there just stunned. I, I remember he was, he was still alive when we were involved in the audition process. Uh, it was actually across the street from the studio at St. Joseph Hospital. But, um, you know, unfortunately, he never left the hospital. But we just we just knew that he was ill because um, I, I believe that was public knowledge at the time. But, um, yeah, the, the Disney studio was a wonderful place. It was a real family operation. It didn't even look like other studios. You know, other studios, it's, it's asphalt and these cement buildings. And Disney studio had these cute little buildings and it had lawns and trees and and streets called, you know, Mickey Avenue and Dopey Drive. And, and apparently Walt was just the kind of hands-on guy where he knew everybody there and he would visit everybody. And, and he was involved in every aspect of, of every project that they did. And like John said, this was the first time where, yes, he, he planned the film, but by the time we went into production, he was gone. And I, and I think it was kind of like a ship without a captain. Well, you know, it was ironic because I did the very last ad for RCA televisions with Walt Disney in October 1966, and he died wow. in December. And it wow. was Walt Disney reading to me and another little girl, Peter Pan, and all of the Walt Disney characters, all of them behind, mm -hmm. behind us, 
and then the castle behind that. And, yeah. um, you know, I could, I could tell he was, and I didn't know he was sick, but I could tell he was tired. He didn't want to talk much. You could just feel that he wasn't well. And, um, yes. and yeah, that was in October and he died in December. So, um, yeah. but you know, I just remembered something. I was, I was incorrect when I, when I said one thing earlier. Remember I said that the, um, that the uh, soundstage where they filmed the, the huge finale was right. the largest soundstage at Disney? Yes. Well, it wasn't. It was the largest soundstage in, in the U.S., the, wow. the, the largest sound, sound stage in the U.S. at the time, and it took it took four days to film that election night dance and brawl. Four days just to film that one scene. Right. Is that incredible? And and yep. you know they never that whole time because they had that pie fight going. They never cleaned our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm serious, and I think it it was probably deliberate. Because the, the next day, they, they wanted all the cake stains on the clothes, the pie stains, to match. Yep. So I remember going back the next day and the next day, putting on the same suit with all the gunk all over it. You know, and, and it, got, it, it got a little gross, actually, because, it, you know, it's food. So after a few days, the, you know, whatever cream is in it kind of really started to not smell very good. And it was really, you know, got really crusty. So, um, but you know, all, all all in the name of art. Right. That's, right, yes. That's amazing. In, in in particular about that scene, you guys got to work with. Well, the main adult cast did, but I believe Debbie and Kurt were also featured in that dance segment. But it was you, Lambert, the choreographer who was married to Nancy Sinatra later on. But do you guys yep. remember right. working with him? Because he he I, I believe he choreographed the rest of the family scenes. Yeah, I remember, he did I, all I the choreography. Little, yeah, I remember with, with that with Hugh Lambert, which just it just popped into my head. Hugh Lambert being married to it, it was a Sinatra, right? Right. Yeah, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Nancy Sinatra, because I, I actually I, I I believe I met Hugh Lambert when Elvis Presley was filming something in Vegas, and Hugh Lambert was involved there, and I and and. I remember seeing him again during that time period. Um, you know, the people being a child actor, the people that I was fortunate to work with, they were just like Tom or Joe or John or Sarah, just normal people. And as a child actor, that's the way I recalled it. Years later, then I find out, obviously, the legends that these people were. And I think that was right. the gift as a child actor that all of us have in common is that, that they treated us not as a quote child actor, but as a child and, and met us halfway. And it, 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 it's kind of a hard thing to explain, but it was that bonding. I think that made us work as a group. You know, I think that was pretty yes. cool. It was, it was a really, really good group. I ha I have to say, um, and, you know, in late, later years, um, you know, I did, I did the Waltons, which was also a very a great experience for me. And that lasted for, for nine seasons. And, and that was and, and is a wonderful group. But I, but I have to say that, that even though we only had four months, this was a very, very special group of people. And, and you know, you, you guys were, were wonderful. And, and like you say, everybody was really good to us. It had a really... There was a, just a terrific familial feeling going on there. Yeah, we were right. all in it together. I mean, literally, if we're out filming early morning and it's cold, we were all out there together. The schooling thing is what I remember a lot. Um, John being a musician, I can't, you know, I've got two left thumbs. And I remember, like, there's one of the publicity pictures that they put me on symbols. You know, all I got to do is, like, move these things together type of a thing. Um, right. Yeah, it was... I think I, 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 I think another reason why we were so close is because we started doing the song and dance rehearsals. Yes. 
we didn't go right into um, we didn't go right into filming it. So we had a chance to just wear our own clothes and kind of make mistakes and laugh together and do these uh, dance rehearsals and song rehearsals. And everybody was there, no makeup. It was just kind of a, a fun little, it was a fun thing. And so I think that's another reason why we got to know each other very well during that. And so then when we put on our costumes and started filming, it was so you know, easy for uh, for the kids to interact with each other. Exactly. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. I, now that was that was my only um, you know mu- musical film experience. Um, is is it normal for for in that situation that you would have a month just of rehearsals before you start shooting? I would think it would be with choreography. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I did Jack and the Beanstalk with Gene Kelly, um, which was just before the family band, um, I think the rehearsals on that was like three, maybe four months. And and, wow. and, and, and with Gene Kelly, you know, to me, he was just a man that danced and sang type of a thing. I didn't know, obviously, the legend that he was, which was a good thing. Um, he wanted me to take ballet lessons and being a young <laughs> seven-year-old, I kind of refused. He wanted me to wear <laughs> tight. He wanted me to wear tights during rehearsals. Right. And as a seven-year-old, I responded as a seven-year-old would. Um, I played little league baseball in that day. In those days, um, same type of a thing. When you rehearse, you get to know each other way before you actually get on the set and get into your clothing and you start filming and, and yeah, you're, you're right that it just jogged my memory, but yeah, I mean, it, it was that foundation building, let's say amongst us. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, you know, John Davidson mentioned it earlier about with Kurt Russell. I mean, you know, who would think that, well, that Kurt out of all of us, I mean, he would turn into this badass, escape from New York, snake one eye patch type of a character. Um, and, you know, John going on to Little House on the Prairie for his seasons after seasons and and everybody else. I mean, it's it was an honor to be, the, you know, to participate. I mean, looking back on it. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I think, too, uh, this is great in here. Now, my acting is limited to like a local theater, but I, you know, talking with my mom and stuff and just the performances that I was in, I think there's something very bonding for a cast that's performing a musical. Just in general. With the with yeah. with the dancing and the singing and I, I don't know, you know, how it is on like a movie set that's not a not a musical, but I know in a play that's a musical versus a straight play. It's a lot more bonding with the cast and everybody. It's a really nice family feel. Because it seems like you guys have to get together, learn the songs together, because at the time they were brand new songs. So there's uh, 11 people in the family all together. And you guys, you know, you rely on one another when you do those dance moves and you have to remember how, you know, do you go to the left? Do you go to the right? Because I do musical theater, too, and I love it. But you really do rely on one another. It's like it's like when you're watching football, you rely on your team members. But it's it's just the same with entertainment especially when you're doing a musical. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I remember during the, some of the dancing scenes, like we were in the barn one time, and uh, Kurt was, like, hanging from some beam up above and, like, was swinging down. And it's like, well, why does he get to do that? It's like, well, Kurt, Kurt has to do that. <laughs> and then I remember there was a time when we were out at the ranch that I wanted, this is, like, day one, I wanted to ride my own horse. Now, you know, I'm a kid from New York, okay? I came out to L.A. in, like, 65. I'm a city kid. So I learned how to ride a horse for all the Westerns and all that. Well, I wanted to ride up my own horse and said, nope, Kurt gets to ride the horse. You're in the wagon. So literally, I think I was in the wagon <laughs> with like Walter Brennan. And I, I mean, I remember that. It like it like tore me up. I thought I was going to be like the little kid cowboy on his own horse. And instead, I'm stuck in a wagon with uh, Walter Brennan. For this experience that you guys had on this on this production, can you give me one word in particular that comes to mind to explain the overall experience? One word is awfully tough. <laughs> you stumped up, Tammy. <laughs> now, I, I would say honored. Looking back at it, totally honored. 
I mean, again, I was a, you know, a 10 year old young and dumb kid, but looking back, totally honored by just everybody, people that have been in this conversation and those that aren't with us, um, just totally honored. Yeah. I would say I was overwhelmed just uh, like I say, it was my, my, uh, second job on television and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I had the least experience of anyone there. And, and, you know, being a kid from England and, and being in, in Hollywood, even though it was Burbank, but, but you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just to be at Disney studios with all these people that I had grown up watching, like Buddy Epson and Walter Brennan it was just, and, and the Sherman brothers, the, it was the writers of the Mary Poppins music and Disney, it was overwhelming. Just amazing. Um, you know, I would have to say um, expectations because I was, I was the youngest and working with all these big celebrities. And I think that I, I just was hoping that I could meet everybody's expectations for me because, you know, oh. it, it was daunting. It was daunting for a six year old and I wanted to, to meet everybody's expectations. My, you know, the directors, my, my mothers, of course, my, uh, you know, the other cast members. So I would, I would say that that would be it. The thing is, you know, you were you were such a little pro and and such a sweetheart, and oh. um, you know, and you still are. I mean, of all these these people, Pam is the one that I've seen the most recently. I mean, it's it's you know probably in a few years now, but but you know these other people I haven't seen for about fifty one years, well, and yeah, it's just yeah. you know it's it's great to hear your voice, and it was great to hear John's voice, and I'm you know sorry Dick Sherman wasn't available. Because you know, I I adore that man. I run into him once or twice over the years too, and he's he's just the biggest sweetheart. And, so, and you um, and I had you and I had a lot of fun together. Seriously, I mean, we might have we might have not seen each other for years at a time, but whenever we came together, whether it was um, your your playing and singing so beautifully, and my wedding, which I am honored to this day that you did and then remember the band <laughs> that my brother put us in with all those yes. costumes oh my god so, <laughs> yes. so you know we've kind of seen each other at different stages and so now i'm determined to see you at this stage oh i hope there's something yes. put together for you guys especially since it is the 50th anniversary of the film and, you know, if, if I were ever to win the jackpot, that would be one thing I'd love to do because just an amazing cast overall. And I really want to thank also Gretchen um, for sending me um, the actual original photo album her mother put together, Heidi did. And um, amazing pictures that you've seen throughout this Fantastic interview. Photos. And, and unbelievable. And um, again, we, we really want to dedicate this episode to Janet, Buddy, Debbie, Heidi, and Walter, who could not be here um and we know i i'm sure you guys miss them dearly and i was just a fan of of theirs and yours so um, a wonderful family a wonderful film and i'm just so honored you guys could be on the show today it really was uh, a blessing and i know bobby and i've been working on this for six years now just to, for us to talk and to be able to you know have that patience to have all of us on the phone is just amazing you know i never would have thought of it so thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart i'm i'm so honored and and blessed we got to speak today likewise. Oh, okay and let's Same. keep in better touch you guys likewise we have our yes. emails and uh, yes i want you to email me <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, the new we'll age do. not running okay. letters but emailing <laughs> i love you guys i love you love you guys too you guys take care right. now Bye. all right big hug to all of you Thank you.